Ooh, that looks tasty. Welcome, folks. Today, the Hungry Gamer is back with another mini review, and today we're talking about Eos Island of Angels, designed by Felix Murtacat and from Gray Fox Games. And I do apologize for butchering that name. And now, if this game sounds a little bit familiar, it's because I did a preview for it. And I also recently did a solo playthrough of it. And usually, I don't come back around if I preview the game. I don't usually come back around and also review it because it's just kind of splitting my own audience, right? But in this case, the final copy is significantly different from the original. They did a lot of development work, and a lot of stuff has been streamlined or stripped away or changed. And while it's not a different game, it is different enough that I thought it worth revisiting. And so what you're gonna be seeing up there is just the solo play that I did as it kind of goes through. And I'm gonna talk briefly about how the game works. So what's gonna happen is each player is a different, for want of a better term, pirate faction with a unique crew and unique art and all of that. And you are descending upon Eos, this island where there's all these angels that have been turned into stone. And there's all these demons around in the water that are doing terrible things. Now, just to be clear, when I talk about angels and demons, we're not talking about Michael and Gabriel and Beelzebub and Lucifer. It's just, it's totally its own world. And all the demons are very kind of crustacean-like critters. And what's going to happen is through an action selection mechanism, you're going to be sailing your ship around the big board. You're going to be picking up things. You're going to be gathering the blessings that you need to free these angels. When you free these angels, then you can go and destroy the demons, because you need the power of the angel to beat the demon. You can weaken it and deal with the little demons, but you can't kill the big demon by yourself, unless you're the one faction that can do it. But you're going to be doing that, and every time you do that, you're ticking the clock one step closer towards the end of the game. And that's actually basically how this game is played. That's what you're doing, but the way you do it is different for every different faction. As you're putting your pawns out to activate the workers, you're not going to be able to activate them again, but each one is going to be powered up differently. As you level them up and increase their morale, you're going to get various bonuses and boosts to the actions they can do. So while at the beginning of the game, when you pick the, the first mate, or whoever it is, you're going to be able to sail maybe one space, and it'll be free. But later on in the game, if you've boosted that, you might pay 30 gold, and you'll be able to sail three times. And the, Or one of the other characters, the, the quartermaster or the quarter beast or the quarter mistress, depending on your faction, you might be able to draw two cards, play one for free. Or pay 40 gold, and you can draw two cards, play two cards, or whatever. Each one's going to be different, and the, and the interesting thing is each faction, the way those things level up and they grow, is different for each one. And I'll also say that each first mate, and I may be mixing up the different names of the factions that do this, but each first mate has a completely different power. As I mentioned, one of them has the ability for you to just literally just kill a demon if you have enough gold to do it. And boom, that's how they do it. And as I said, they're all quite different. And as you go, you're going to be able to unlock powers for each of the characters. You can upgrade your ship and all of these things. But when all of your workers are out, you're going to bring them back. And as you bring them back one at a time, you'll be getting bonus actions on your ship as you go. So you put the thing down, you put one pawn back, you get an action. And again, each ship, as you can guess, is different. And the last thing I want to mention is there are these quests seated around the board. And if you go there, they're... they're they take a lot of resources to handle, but if you do that, you get cool rewards, sometimes like a whole other ship you get to use, and at the same time, you're going to, again, advance the end of the game. So every major action you do is pushing you towards the end of that game. And then at the end of the game, whoever has the most glory is going to win. You're getting glory by doing all kinds of things, but that's the core of how this game works. So what do I like about this game? The first thing that I like is I love the asymmetric factions. I, I love it, I love it, I love it, and I love that even the way they level up is different. It is wonderful the way that works. Next thing I'm going to say is it's a weird-ass theme. It's bizarre as hell, and I am here for it. All about it. Initially, when I heard about it, I was like, uh, I'm not really into religious themes, but hey, religious. Like I said, it's it's not... Michael Gabriel Biblical, it is its own crazy world, and I'm here for it. I love it. Along with that, the art is awesome. This game looks great, 
The weird, weird different factions are amazing. I love the character art. I love the way it looks. It's just awesome. Next thing I'm going to say is, it's a lot of fun leveling up your characters. Because maybe by the end of the game, you'll have everyone close to leveled up. But it's a really hard choice deciding, who do I want to level up? Who do I want to boost their morale? Because I boost the morale here, that's going to get me closer to their kind of capstone ability they get. But if I boost this other one, it's going to give me this other thing that I need right now. Very, very fun. Very, very interesting as you're trying to maximize your actions. The next thing I'm going to say is, the game puts a little bit of pressure on you. Because each demon that's out has a curse that's doing something bad to everybody. The game that I played at a recent convention, the bad thing that was happening to everybody was you could never have more than 30 gold. And that was annoying. And so it suddenly put this pressure of everyone's trying to go get rid of that thing and it changed what you're doing. So just a little bit of pressure is put on you and I do enjoy that. Then the last thing I'm going to say is the game kind of lets you do your own thing. And this is going to be the first thing I talk about in Quibbles, but it's very much multiplayer solitaire. You can do your thing. No one can mess with you, at least not in a way that is irregular. There may be some cards in there that do something, but for the most part, it, it's going to let you do what you want. It's going to let you do your own thing. You might be racing to something in that, but it is a multiplayer solitaire game. So what are my quibbles with the game? Well, it's a multiplayer solitaire game. You might not like that. I like that. I enjoy a multiplayer solitaire game. I say this all the time. Let me do my plan and prove that my plan is better than your plan, and I will feel good about myself. And then if I lose, I just have no one to blame but myself. So... I enjoy that, but might not be your thing. There is not very much interaction in this game. Next thing I'm going to say is, I talked about how the game pressures you a little bit, but it's never a threat. You can manage with the little curses. You can, you can manage, you can move around, you can do it, you can ignore it. So it does pressure you and kind of can drive you doing things, but you're never feeling like, oh my gosh, the game is doing this, I must do this thing. And again, just like with the multiplayer solitaire, that might not be your thing. You might not enjoy that. You may want the game to really kind of grab onto you and kind of force you into making big, hard decisions a little bit faster, and you don't get that with Aos. The next thing I'm going to say is it has a solo mode, and as you saw the video I had going up there, and you can go check it out, I will say that the solo mode is a, is a tool. I think it is a tool to kind of help you learn the game, to learn factions. It is not something that I would recommend if you're just a solo player. It, there's too much that you don't get to interact with because you pull some things out of the game and some of the factions, even though you're not really affecting somebody else, a lot of their abilities aren't useful really in the solo game. And I'm not saying I won't ever play the solo game because I will. I've played it three times already and I recorded one of them. And it's the type of thing that if I were setting the game up and had people coming over to play, I might say, you know what, I'm going to set it up an hour early to kind of do a solo game. Because it is enjoyable, but this is not something I would recommend for just the solo player. Second to last thing I'm going to say is that there is some downtime. And it's not that there's a ton of AP in this game. I, I don't think there really is. I'm sure somebody could do it. But it does take a little while to do some of your turns, especially on the turns when you're pulling back. Because when you pull back, you might be doing four different actions at the same time. And so if you're playing a four or five player game, then you may be waiting for a while to come back around to your turn. So just something to keep in mind. And the last thing I'm going to say is I think you need the deluxe version. And now... To be fair, this is my understanding. My understanding is that in the base version, the player boards are just flat. And one of the mechanics is you have this hope meter that goes up and down. And when you move it up, it's got little, little gears and teeth. And that's how it stops where it is. Well, the part with the, the top part is the cardboard. But if the bottom part is just a flat page, it's not going to hook in there. And so you're in danger of you know, bumping the board or something. Now... To be fair, I don't know that that is a fact, but I am but I think that is the case. So I guess what I'm saying is I definitely recommend the deluxe version because it's gorgeous. It's a beautiful, beautiful thing. And if you're not going to get it, if you're going to get the core, just, just double check on that. Just double check on that. But there you have it, folks. That is Aos Island of Angels. This is one that I was super high on it when I previewed it, and it just took a while to fulfill, as sometimes these things do, especially when you're in the pandemic. And I kind of lost my love of it. But then Lance said, you know, oh, no, we're going to send you a copy you know, for doing the, the preview for us. And it came out, and I busted it back out. I played solo, and I was like, oh, yeah. Yeah, I, oh, yeah, this game. I like this game. It's cool. But as I said, it's just a solo. And then I wasn't sure. I was like, you know what? Let me get it back in front of some other people. Let me play with some people. And I played a four-person game recently. And it's popping. I like it. 
I like this game a lot. It's staying on my shelf. I'd buy more factions if they offered them to me right now. Do I need more factions? No. <laughs> Is there plenty of gameplay in that box? Yes. Would I buy them? Yes. And it just really worked for me. I especially think that this game is going to really cook at two and three players. Oh, man, because then it's just really moving. Anyhow, I'm pretty high on this game. I really, really enjoyed it, and it's definitely one that I'm hoping to play more regularly. It, it, it's falling right into that chunk of games I have. I'm like, I need to play this. I walk into my game room, and I look around, I'm like, that game. Why haven't I played that game? It's right in there with that. So I'm excited to have it. I'm glad I've played, got to play it again. I'm looking forward to playing more of it. There you have it, folks. That is Aos Island of Angels. As always, if you found this video useful, please like, subscribe, share, maybe become a channel member. As always, thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful, wonderful day.